Solving data structure and algorithms can be intimidating, not to mention time consuming as well. But just like how we are surrounded by patterns in real life, there's also a bunch of patterns that allow you to solve a wide range of data structure and algorithm problems in a very quick and efficient manner. So here are six coding patterns that will enable you to quickly figure out and easily solve data structure algorithm problems. The first one is the two pointer approach. The two pointer approach involves using two pointers that traverse an array or a linked list simultaneously, often starting from different positions or moving at different speeds. This approach is particularly useful when dealing with problems that require comparisons or operations between different elements of the data structure. This approach is valuable because it often allows you to solve problems with a time complexity of O n, which means the time it takes to solve the problem grows linearly with the input size. The two-pointer approach can be used to solve patterns that include finding pairs, removing duplicates, or searching in a sorted array or linked list. One good example is the two-sum problem, where given an array of integers and a target value, you need to find two numbers in the array that add up to the target. Instead of writing two for loops and iterating through the entire array for each element, you can use the two-pointer approach by initializing two pointers, one at the beginning and other at the end of the array. By comparing the sum of the elements pointed by the two pointers with the target, you can adjust the pointers accordingly until you find the desired pair. Two-pointer approach can also be used to reverse an array of elements in an array, where you can initialize two pointers, one at the beginning and other at the end, then swap the elements pointed by the two pointers, and then increment the first pointer and decrement the second pointer until they meet in the middle of the array. You can also use two-pointer approach to check palindrome, remove duplicates from a sorted array, and many more. The second pattern is sliding window. Imagine you have a sequence of elements like numbers or characters and you need to find a specific pattern or solve a problem within that sequence. The sliding window approach suggests using a window that starts at the beginning of the sequence and moves through it, one element at a time, while keeping track of some information about the window, allowing you to cover a lot of the problems related to arrays, strings, and hash tables. The sliding window approach can be used to solve many patterns related to subarrays or substrings, finding specific patterns, calculating sums or averages, and more. One good example is the maximum sum subarray problem, where you are given an array of integers and you need to find the subarray or contiguous elements with the maximum sum. You can use the sliding window approach by initializing two pointers, one at the beginning and other at the end of the window. As you slide the window to the right, you add the current element to the sum and compare it with the maximum sum found so far. If the current sum becomes negative, you move the window's left pointer to the next element, effectively sliding the window. By continuously updating the maximum sum, you can find the subarray with the largest sum efficiently. Apart from maximum sum subarray, this pattern can also be used to solve problems like longest substring without repeating characters, fixed length subarray average, and many more. The third pattern is binary search. Binary search is used to efficiently search for a specific element in a sorted array or list. Imagine you have a sorted list of elements, like numbers or words, and you need to find a specific element within that list. The binary search approach suggests dividing the list in half and comparing the middle element with the target element you're looking for. If the middle element is the target element, the search is successful, and you have found what you were looking for. If the middle element is greater than the target, you can eliminate the right half of the list since the target can only exist in the left half. Likewise, if the middle element is smaller than the target, you can eliminate the left half of the list. This approach is particularly useful when working with large sorted lists or arrays as it offers a time complexity of O log n, meaning the search time increases logarithmically with the size of the input. This makes it significantly faster than linear search algorithms, which have a time complexity of O n. A good example of this approach would be finding the square root of a given number. You can apply the binary search approach to narrow down the range of possible square roots. For example, if the number is x, you can start with a lower bound of 0 and an upper bound of x. Then at each step, calculate the middle value between the lower and upper bounds. If the square of the middle value is greater than x, you can update the upper bound. If the square of the middle value is smaller than x, you can update the lower bound. By repeatedly dividing the range and adjusting the bounds, you can converge on an approximate square root of x with a desired precision. A few other examples could be searching for a number, searching in a dictionary, and many more. The fourth pattern is recursion and backtracking. The coding pattern is used to solve problems by breaking them down into smaller similar sub-problems. When a function calls itself during its execution, it's called recursion. Recursion allows you to solve complex problems by breaking them down into smaller, simpler sub-problems. 
and backtracking is a technique used when exploring multiple possibilities to find a solution. Backtracking involves making a choice, exploring that choice, and then undoing it if it doesn't lead to a valid solution. Recursion and backtracking often go hand in hand. Recursion allows you to break a problem into smaller sub-problems, while backtracking allows you to explore different possibilities and backtrack when you need to find the optimal solution. The recursion or backtracking coding pattern is commonly used in the problems that involve traversing trees, graphs, permutations, combinations, and searching for all possible solutions. For example, you can use recursion and backtracking to find permutations of elements in a given array. In this problem, recursion can be used to generate permutations for a smaller set of elements. You can combine those permutations to obtain the permutations of the larger set. And then backtracking is used to explore different possibilities and backtrack when necessary. It allows you to try different elements at different positions in the permutation and undo those choices if they don't lead to a valid solution. The fifth pattern is Depth First Search or DFS. This pattern is used to traverse or search through a graph or tree data structure. It explores the depths of the structure before backtracking to previous nodes when necessary. The steps followed in DFS look something like this. You can start by visiting a starting node in the graph or tree. Once at a node, explore one of its branches as far as possible before backtracking. This means traversing to an adjacent or connected node that hasn't been visited yet. If there are no more unvisited nodes reachable from the current node, backtrack to the previous node that has unexplored branches. And then you keep repeating steps 2 and 3 until all nodes have been visited or until a specific condition or goal is met. The DFS coding pattern is often implemented using recursion or a stack to keep track of the visited nodes and the order in which they were visited. The DFS approach can be used to solve problems related to graph traversal, finding connected components, maze solving, detecting cycles, and more. The sixth and the last pattern is breadth for a search or BFS. This pattern is also used to traverse or search through a graph or tree data structure. It explores the nodes in a breadth-wise manner, which means visiting all nodes at a particular depth level before moving to nodes at the next depth level. So instead of visiting the entire depth of one side of the node like it's done in DFS, BFS visits the nodes level by level. The steps followed in DFS look something like this. Start by visiting a starting node in the graph or tree. Then visit all immediate neighboring or connected nodes of the current node before visiting their neighbors. Move horizontally in the same level and visit all the current layer's nodes. After visiting all nodes of the current level, move to the next level and repeat the previous step of traversing all nodes horizontally in that level. Then continue exploring and visiting nodes level by level until all nodes are visited or until a specific condition or goal is met. The BFS approach can be used to solve problems related to shortest path finding, finding all nodes at a specific distance from a given starting node, web crawling, connectivity analysis which means to determine the connectivity between nodes in a graph to identify reachable nodes from a given starting point, and many more similar problems. So these were the six coding patterns you should learn to solve a wide range of data structure and algorithm problems in a very quick and efficient manner. If you have more patterns in your mind, then I would love to hear them in the comments section. If you found the video insightful, give it a like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.